We do not respect people's beliefs. We evaluate their reasons. If, if my reasons are good enough for believing what I believe, you will helplessly believe what I believe. I will give you my reasons, and, and reasons are contagious. Just appreciate for a moment how easy this is to see when we just change the subject from God to some mundane, grandiose claim. This is actually an example from my book. If I told you that I believe that there was a diamond buried in my backyard that's the size of a refrigerator, it might occur to you to ask me why. If in response I gave the, the kinds of answers you hear from religious moderates, so I said things like, well, um, this belief actually gives my life a lot of meaning, or I, I wouldn't want to live in a universe where there wasn't a diamond buried in my backyard that's the size <laughs> of a refrigerator. It's pretty clear that responses of this sort are deeply inadequate. They're worse than that. They, they are the responses of a lunatic or an idiot. You change the subject to religion, to the moral demands of an invisible superintelligence, to what happens after death, and all bets are off. Then you can say anything you want. Another problem with religious moderation is that it's not only intellectually bankrupt, it is theologically bankrupt. Because the fundamentalists have actually read the books, and they're right about them. These books are every bit as intolerant, every bit as divisive as the Osama bin Ladens of the world or the Jerry Falwells of the world suggest. And I'm not necessarily equating the two of them in moral terms. But there is, these, once we dignify the claim that the Bible or the Quran is a communication that is fundamentally different from any other book, we are really hostage to their contents. I mean, the creator of the universe does hate homosexuals. If you read the Bible, at the very least, homosexual men, gay sex, is an abomination. It, it, it is spelled out in Leviticus. It is, it, this edict is ramified in Romans. It's not, many Christians imagine that the New Testament fundamentally repudiates all the barbarism that's found in the Old Testament in books like Leviticus and Deuteronomy and 2 Samuel and Exodus. That's not true. I guarantee you that the inquisitors of the Middle Ages who were burning heretics alive for five solid centuries, they had read the whole New Testament. They had read the Sermon on the Mount. They found some way to square their behavior with, with the ministry of Jesus. We look back on these events and we think, well, you know, people being burnt alive, scholars being tortured to the point of madness for speculating about the nature of the stars. We look back from our, our perch in the 21st century and we think, okay, well, these societies were just unhinged. I mean, these were lunatics. It's not true. This, this was totally reasonable behavior given what was believed. Another problem with moderation, incidentally, is moderates, and certainly secularists, tend to be blinded by their own moderation. It, it's, it's very difficult for moderates to actually believe that people believe this stuff. It, it's, it's difficult for a moderate. When you see on the, on the news broadcast, you see the jihadist looking into the video camera saying things like, we love death more than the infidel loves life. And then he blows himself up. Religious moderates tend to think, well, no, no, that really wasn't why he blew himself up. You know, it doesn't have anything to do with religion. This is economics, it's lack of, of educational opportunities. I don't know how many more engineers and architects have to hit the wall at 400 miles an hour for us to realize this is not simply a matter of education. It, the, the, the truth of our circumstance is quite a bit more sinister than that. It is actually possible to be so well educated that you can build a nuclear bomb and still believe that you're going to get the 72 virgins. <laughs> that's how balkanized our discourse is, and that's how, that's how easily partitioned the human mind is. I just want to say that, that whatever is true 
spiritually and ethically about our circumstance. There are no doubt there are spiritual truths. There are spiritual experiences human beings can have. And there are eth ethical truths. Whatever is true about that has to transcend culture. It has to transcend our cultural differences. There's a reason why we don't talk about Christian physics and Muslim mathematics. Because these truths actually, an experiment run here and in Baghdad actually works both places if it's teasing out something fundamental about the nature of the universe. That is true ethically, that is true spiritually. And the, and the only thing that guarantees that our human conversation is open-ended is a willingness for us to have our beliefs about reality updated and revised by conversation. Because when the stakes are high, we have a choice between conversation and violence, both at the level of individuals and at the level of societies. So my, my pitch to you is really that the end game for civilization is not political correctness and tolerating all manner of absurdity. It is reason and reasonableness and an openness to evidence. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice